Hey everybody, today in this video we are going to be setting up PowerShell remoting. Uh, this is something that is going to allow us to manage multiple computers. Uh, we're going to set this up via group policy. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So in our environment right here we have a domain controller and we have a workstation uh, in the same domain. Um, we're going to jump into the domain controller and we're going to verify that PowerShell remoting is not already enabled. So here's our domain controller. I'm going to pop open PowerShell. I'm going to Alt Enter for full screen. And I'm just going to ping that lab host name right there. So we know that it can respond to ping. We know it's alive. But let's say we want to test if the, uh, uh, the WinRM service is available. We're going to use testwsman. And we're going to give it that same host name. So what it's doing is it's it's checking to see if uh, PowerShell communicates over port uh, 5985. And so if it can't get through and it can't get to the service, it's going to it's gonna uh, fail like we see right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a group policy um, that is going to allow us access. So I like having all of my uh, management um, features uh, in one one console. So, for instance, Aduck. Um, I know that um, that W05 computer is living right here, uh, and I also have my group policy in the same uh, kind of panel. It's really it's kind of cool. Um, so let's go down, and I have one default domain policy, but we are more interested in all of our objects. I'm going to create a new policy here. Uh, I like giving it a verb name format, very similar to like a commandlet. So in this one, it's going to be enable PowerShell remoting. And let's go ahead and edit it. So in our group policy, we are going to be configuring four items. The first is that we are going to allow uh, WS management uh, or allow remote PowerShell remoting basically. Uh, the second is we are going to go ahead and open up that port 5985 uh, and there's a uh, predefined rule that we can uh, that we can set. The other two are going to be related to the WinRM service itself. We're going to go ahead and tell it to automatically start that service and then should that service fail we're going to go ahead and say restart the service. So we're going to start in policies, in admin templates, Windows components, Towards the bottom, you're going to see Windows Remote Management. We want the service, and here is what we were looking for. Allow remote server management through WinRM. We're going to go ahead and say yes. This is where we can tell it to filter just certain computers. So if you have a restriction, uh, or let's say that you only want to allow PowerShell remoting from, let's say, a domain controller or a central admin computer, you can specify that IP address right here. But in this case, I'm just going to say everything is fine. Step one is done. I'm going to scroll back to the top and we're going to go under Windows settings and we are going to have a look security at our inbound rule. So fortunately for us, uh, there is already a predefined uh, remote management um, rule. So the one that we're going to do is just Windows remote management. We'll go ahead and yes. And so what it's doing is it's saying HTTP in. Uh, we can we can set for uh, which type of profile, for instance, public or domain and private. Uh, and then, like we mentioned earlier, we are communicating via port 5985 over a TCP connection. So that looks good to me. I'm going to allow it. Great. Uh, we are also going to have a look at the system services right here, the one that we're interested in is WS management. Let's go ahead and say an automatic. And the last thing that we're going to do is actually under preferences, under services, and we're going to go ahead and create that WinRM service. And for recovery, I want it to restart. Restart the service, restart the service. Oops. Cool. That was it, that was the policy. So now, what we can do, let's go ahead and get out of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna link it to my computer's OU. PowerShell remoting. 
Perfect. Okay. So once again, we are searching. So we're going to see if we can see if it's listening. But of course, we have to apply it first. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So I'm going to go hop into this W05. I'm going to launch PowerShell and full screen. And then I'm going to GP update force. And this is going to pull it down from my default domain controller or my login server. Um, that is the DC01 that we were just on. And it looks good. Another really kind of neat thing. Another really neat thing is you probably already know Netstat. Netstat does, if you don't, it displays the simultaneous network connections. Uh, but the PowerShell equ equivalent is going to be get uh, net TCP connection. Uh, and actually, I can get I can feed it a parameter that's going to be local port. And I'm going to say 5985. And so that's perfect. So that means that our policy worked. Um, and it's listening right here. I'm going to, that's all we need from this computer. Once you, that, that's, that's like the nice thing is like once PowerShell remoting is enabled, like, you know, and you can reach that computer, you know, you have like full command line access. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to test. And that's a beautiful thing to see. That means that it's listening. That means the firewall port is open. Uh, and then we can do wonderful things like this. And we can enter that session. So you'll see, you'll see the prompt change in just a moment. And so it's telling us that we're no longer on DC01, we're on W05. So I hope that's given you a, a pretty good idea how to set up that group policy. I'll go ahead and I'll link the article um, a supporting article to this video uh, and thanks very much for watching appreciate it okay